Hi, I'm Paul Apps, and this is the second of our demonstrations uh, for you. And uh, we've we've we finished the uh, charcoal one, which I thoroughly enjoyed, and I hope you enjoyed that one too. But what we're going to be doing now is acrylics, and we're going to be doing a barn owl, and it's the second of our whole series. So enjoy this one, and uh, if you don't use acrylics, then hopefully it might might make you want to pick them up and have a try. Before we go jumping off into the painting itself, let me tell you a little bit about the materials. I, I have a, a fairly regular system, whether I'm working in watercolor, whether I'm working in acrylics, or working in oil, I have a set system of colors that I use. The reason for that is, if I keep everything in the same place all the time, I can reach down pretty much and know where I'm gonna grab a color from. If I have them all higgledy-piggledy, I'll make a big mess very quickly because I'm going to put my brush into something that I don't really want. So it's important to try and have this regime about your work and a working ethic or working practice that you keep the colors out the same way. Um, the brushes I use are here. They are either a synthetic or a mild hog. And I try to use, I don't know, couple for every size. So if I'm working on the big area of the background, I use two. And this is to go either for light values and dark values, or indeed warm values and cool values. But I don't try and mix the two together on the same brush. It keeps you from wasting paint and muddy in color. So if you're working generally in, in warms and cools, you have two. And you'll see here that there are several of each type working in that way. So that's my brushes. So all the bits and pieces that I've got here, and I include a little bit of rag just to take any excesses off, and I use a palette knife. Uh, sometimes I scratch into the painting and use it, um, but not always, but it's there in case. Now for the board and the painting itself. I've got my reference. It's not brilliant reference. It's a, it's a quick color copy, and sometimes it does pay you to have a nice copy of a piece of reference that you're using because the colors are that much more important to, to do. But I'm familiar with the owl. I actually have one of these at home, um, a barn owl, which is not a rescue, it's actually a, a, a captive bred one that uh, the owner of such couldn't take it anymore. And as I have a few birds of this nature, uh, it, it, it came to live with me nine years ago now. So it's, it's a good member of the family, but that's, that's the uh, barn owl. And now the board, let me just sort of show you this. This is MDF board, or uh, a masonite board. It's a tempered board. The surface I've done with uh, acrylic gesso, and I do three coats of acrylic gesso. And I don't have them going this way, then that way. I just make all my brush marks very arbitrary, because I like to have a little bit of texture in the surface. So that's really important to me. And I give it a very light sand with some sort of very high grit, 240, 320 grit paper, just as a little softener and a key to that color. But then comes the important part for me. Uh, lots of artists like working on a white background, and that's fine. That's how when you normally you buy a canvas or a canvas board or you gesso something, it's a white surface. I, you will see, work on a colored surface. Now, I like that for a couple of reasons. One, if I am working on, say, a sunset, nice warm, I can put a very cool underground coming in. And so what happens is I allow some of that to come through the painting, and that just gives another dimension to the work that I'm doing. If I was doing a snow scene, really cool colors, I would actually have quite a warm background on there first. But for now, what I did is the last coat of this, I used a color in my white gesso, and this, a warm gray, a cool and a warm mid-tone. So I've used a lot of earth tones and whatever, and it just softens that to this nice color. What I did take the liberty of doing is, having drawn the owl on, I then just put some clear gesso over it to seal it. You don't need to do that. If you're going straight in to paint it, that's fine. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I just wanted to seal it and I didn't want to destroy any of the drawing for you to see. So I actually just sealed this whole thing in a clear gesso and preserved the drawing underneath. But there is a tip. If you've done an ice drawing and you don't want to destroy it, if you too cover yours in a clear gesso, then if you do make a mistake, you can work and wipe off and work backwards and you still have your drawing underneath. 
not so hot with acrylic painters, but if you're painting an oil, you can wipe it off and start again. So that's a real plus. Okay, now for the painting itself. So let's get started. Right, now then, uh, we are going to get into some colour because we've got grey on here and, the, and I've said to you one reason why I have the grey board, but the other reason is that I can establish my lights and my darks very early on. If I'm working on a white background, it's extremely hard to see any of the, of the light values that you put on here against the white. But if you work on this colour, you can instantly see where the light parts are and the dark parts are. Now this is a picture of a barn owl and it's quite late in the day so there's not an awful lot of light in here. I have to create that. So I'm using the idea of the sky and this marshy area uh, in this painting but at the same time what I'm trying to show you is that I'm going to increase the light in here to give it a much more beautiful effect. So let's get on with it. I tend to work over the whole painting so we'll do that here. I'm mixing some Naples yellow and some white together and touch a little bit of cadmium red in there and I'm just going to push that into the base part of... Now you see how instantly I can see the light. I'm not going to go too much water. I try and control the amount of water that I put in but I've got a nice warm salmony colour with this Naples yellow and this red and I can just put that in really beautifully light and bright and it's going to really punch out against the background and the foreground. So I'm using this to great effect here. Now you can see automatically by um, putting this owl onto this grey ground instantly you can see the lights and the darks already forming. And the nice thing about this owl is that it's got this lovely cool underneath and that's going to really work with these lovely warm values in here. Now when I speak of values I'm talking about colour and the value of that colour. Uh, in relationship to that of tone. Tone is how light and dark and this is the strength. So I am just blocking in fairly quickly areas of this and I'm altering some of this just taking it a little stage lighter just the, the same two colors but just a little bit more white into the mix but you have to be really aware with white because white is not always the best way to lighten a value or lighten a colour because what will happen is you'll cool the colour. So you have to replace what is happening if you cool it too much. You do sometimes have to replace the warmth. So just watch that. But keep enough going. Don't go all over your palette and make a big mess of one colour. Here I've got this colour and I'm not really trying to make it go any further. If I want a variation of this I'll pull some to one side and I'll work off of the side. That way if I need to go back in I've still got some of the original ones still there. Now as this goes up I will encompass the bird in it. I think this is quite nice having this bright colour all the way around the bird in this fashion. And without even putting any dark colours on at all, you can actually see that there is this difference between the lights and the darks already. Now, if this had this been a white canvas, you wouldn't have seen that. Not in the same way. So I, I'm using this now, and I'm just going to take this up into a light, a little bit more a cool. So I'm going to put a little bit of alizarin. And again, as you can see, I'm working off of one side. Put a little bit of blue in there little bit of ultramarine blue, just going to come in at the top, maybe a little bit more blue, perhaps a touch more white in there. You see all my little mixes, I'm not going over everywhere and I'm starting again and I can clean my brush or use another one and I can come back into those any given moment. So I'm just going to put the top of this guy in, nice evening because it was a beautiful evening here. And some of my guide marks for my drawing, I'm just going to paint them out now, so I just leave the actual drawing itself. Now you'll see that none of my skies are pure across. They're not. They're very arbitrary. The paint marks, I like paint marks in my work. I don't tend to try and make an even colour of blue, an even colour of something else. I try to make them uh, integrate, and so you use several colours to build up the sky. And that, I think, is quite important. I do like that effect. So that's good. Let's just bring that round now. There's going to be quite a warm area in the underside of this wing. So I'm quite happy to bring some of this lovely blue colours into the 
area just around the head of the bird. Again, I'm using the, the complementaries to work with each other and the warms and cools will work to great effect because the top of this bird is going to be a lovely warm colour and so when it sets that against that blue it'll, it'll punch, it'll be good. At least I hope it'll be good, I'm sure it will. I'm just working this all in together now. And if you see closely, there are areas of that grey warm board, they're coming through the sky, they're coming through the background. I'm not so precious that I need to make sure every inch is covered. And by allowing some of those areas to show through, they just add another dimension to the whole thing. I'm just coming back in, I'm just making some of these transitions a little more subtle. It's just a lovely warm feeling. And I'm not painting this in a sense to have a beautiful set of colours going. I'm trying to give a feeling of an evening light. If I achieve that at the end of this, then, then we've, we've done very, very well. Just going to warm that up through there before we start getting into the lower part in the foreground. But what I do tend to do is I work over the whole painting at once. But that can, that can bring its own set of problems. So for this purposes, I'm going to work the background, I'm going to work the foreground, and I'm going to work the bird. But um, in my own work often, I tend to work over the whole area at once. And the reason for that is a very good one, is that you can actually judge one tone against another tone or another one value against another one. You judge passages of painting over the whole area. And so... Uh, you have a balance and a harmony that builds up and that's really quite important because often if somebody starts painting here and ends up here often they've learned a few things on the way through the painting and by the time they get from there to there this is a lot more sophisticated than here or they've had changes of color mixes that often it means to say that this looks wrong compared to this so if you learn to paint over the whole painting and keep making corrections and judgments, then by the end it'll have a harmony that is across the whole thing. Okay, so we've done the background and that's fine, but what I've noticed is that I just want to bring this down a little further because if you have a, a, a horizon line right through the middle of your picture, it makes a hard picture that people look at, so it becomes a little boring. So when I paint a landscape, whether it's got an animal in it or a bird in it or whatever, I'll either go for a fairly low or a very high horizon line. It makes the whole thing more dramatic. And it's also something that a lot of landscape photographers will use and employ as a, a, a technique in their own work. So using coming back into this mix just one quick time, we're just going to put a little bit more of this in. We can make it a little bit warmer as it comes down into the... Um, Base there. I'm going to bring it down to about there, which means I can make adjustments up here if I need to, or I can leave well alone. It's entirely up to me. Okay, so now I'm going to put a little bit of umber into the edge of my blue. See again, I've used an extra bit. I haven't made a whole new place and a harder place to paint. I've just taken a bit of that blue, taken it off to one side, and added just a little bit of umber to that. I just want to come in with a little bit of a little bit of hills or something in the far distance. Very, very, not. I'm not going to try and take, make too much of it. I just want to put some little bit of form of ground in there so that it looks like far away that there is some form of hill structure or ground that is not in the immediate vicinity. I'm just going to run that through there and right underneath the bird. Now, what I'm going to do is come in with some... Um, a raw sienna, sorry, some yellow ochre, and I'm just going to put in what will be some of the uh, areas of far up grasses. They are going to be slightly cool, they're not going to have the same sort of light value that the ones near to will have. It's just nice and muted at the moment, and that's where I'm going to keep it. And just to increase a little bit more ochre as we just bring that a little more forward and some burnt, uh, some raw sienna in there too, just to give it a bit more richness. 
and I can bring that in like so. And I'm not trying to, I'm certainly what you won't see me do is try and paint individual pieces of grass or reeds in this reed bed. It doesn't interest me. Um, it's much more painfully, more desired as a finished effect to have something that creates the feeling of, of the, um, the grasses and the reeds and not try and paint all the individual ones. Even trying to photograph them, they don't come out as individual ones. So why try and paint them as such? Just try and create the, the area as a, as a whole and give a feeling of what you're trying to do. Now I'm going to actually make this bird quite close to us and I'm going to push all that foreground, even this foreground, not in front of it but behind it by giving you a different perspective than the photograph. The photograph shows the bird way off small in the picture and I've drawn it quite large in this uh, painting and, the, and there's a very good reason because this is high and forward and I'm going to just put in some what will be some water I think. I quite like the idea. I'm using a bit of blue, a little bit of white, and a little bit of the uh, Naples. Just going to put in a little bit of water in between some of these reeds. I'm going to bring it right down to the base of the painting and we can deal with that in any way in the, in the future and later on but we're just going to put in a look of some water. I quite like the idea of that so we're going to run with that. Now there's two things about this water. One it's not going to be blue, um, it's going to be warm colours and it's going to have a little bit of the sky colour into it. So I'm going to just put in a little bit of that pink in the very foreground. So it just represents a bit of a harmony between the foreground and the background and it's reflecting the sky colour just a little bit but enough to uh, give the whole thing a nice look and a nice feel. And once again the colours underneath that, uh, that coloured ground that I started off with is paying dividends now because it's actually punching out and you can see uh, the effect that that water is making. And I'm just going to carry on now with some of these nice areas of grasses. And here I'm using the same brush, I've used the same brush throughout so far, but what I've done now is I've turned the brush, it's a nice flat, and it does lovely broad areas, that's, that's fair to say. But when you get a nice brush and you treat it well, you also get a chisel edge. And to that effect, you can use this chisel edge to create these grasses. Now, again, I am not painting, I assure you, any individual blade of grass. It just looks that way. But by coming in in this fashion, I can give the effect of blades of grass. A bit more water, just a bit more control. Bring some of that into here as well. Goes all over the place, some into this water vary the strokes which is nice and just come up into the, some more blue I just want to bring some of that up into there as well so some of these are almost silhouetted against this lovely sky and I can vary that I can put some very blue ones in and I can actually warm that blue with a little bit of the raw sienna in there too while it's on the page and just bring some of these in so I'm just going to bring some of this through I'm going to leave a little bit in the centre here. I don't want to complicate too much. I'm going to put the, the odd little head coming up through and just pushing past. And by angling them a little bit, you're actually giving a sense of movement to the whole thing. I'm just going to bring some into there. Now, all these colours are being repeated. That's one thing I will say. There's the blues and the blues. There's the pinks and the pinks and what have you. And, and the idea is that you create a harmony across the whole area of the painting that you're, you're doing. I'm going to bring some of these colours. I'm going to actually start messing around with this because sometimes you get a haze, you get some distant grasses. And I'm just going to play around with this um, horizon line just a tad, just a little bit, and mix it up a little bit. And I think this will enhance the whole effect and again it's a light effect it's not I'm not trying to paint individual bits I'm not trying to uh, construct a part of the marsh I'm just trying to create an effect overall I'm just going to bring that in there and all of a sudden you see these little areas of warm cool complementaries lights darks and what they're doing is they're adding depth 
all the time building and not doing an awful lot of work for it. I'm just adding them in and going over them with the opposite. And that is increasing the amount of depth in through these bushes. And I'm bringing in some of the lights of these grasses as they hit what last light there is left that we had. I'm just putting those in. And I'm using the very tip of the brush to do so. So I'm just going to stop it there for a little while. I'm just going to take a couple of minutes just to look at it. And then if I'm happy with that, I'll come back and we'll do the bird. Or we'll start working on the bird. And I might make a few adjustments into this foreground. So I've, I've taken a little time out now. And I've, I just wasn't quite happy with a couple of things. And all I've done is I've lighten this background a little bit and I've scumbled across here with some both the colors again just to soften the transition a little but I've allowed on here where I've lightened this from the color that it was I've actually used quite dry brush scumbling techniques as well and allowing in places as you can see some of what was there to come through so it just mixes the whole thing up a bit what I also did is I added some weight down here and this was just almost contaminated paint in a sense it was darker values of the of the uh, uh, a little bit of burnt sienna a little bit of alizarin and crimson some of the ultramarine blue just mixed up to give this dirty dull color gray effect down the bottom here and what i've started to do now is i'm using the edge of the brush i've mixed in a different color now i've used a little bit of my cadmium red uh, cadmium red and my cadmium yellow with some more white to make a slightly more punchy light color but still uh, with the red in there and not now using the Naples yellow. So we're just going to put in some highlights. I haven't quite decided. I think because of the way the wings are on this I'm going to have the light coming this way a little bit. So I'm just going to put some of these light areas in to, to push up these grasses. I'm going to bring them up into this light area too. And don't forget they do make all sorts of shapes and marks on their own. Don't cover over everything. Don't literally place these colors over all your other colors. Make them some on and some missing because that way you'll get depth. And make them quite warm. Don't make them yellow. Don't make them red. Make them that rather punchy salmony color. And it still evokes the, a nice evening light feel. And we can make these grasses anywhere we want to. But don't make a whole load and just have one bright lot there and all the way across because it will look dead. So this is about moderation. It's a little bit of consideration at the same time. And just make sure that you don't overdo anything in particular. Or so it just won't work. And we'll have this in this fashion. I think this is quite nice. A shadow area behind that grass so we'll leave that coming up in there like so we'll bring it up into the light that's good 